All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to CCXRC. I am Tony, and this is my new FMS Atlas 6x6. I wanted these back when they first came out. They sold out and weren't available, and then they were available, but a bunch of other stuff was coming out. Uh, and then FMS has been sending me some of their other stuff, and they heard that I didn't have this one yet, and uh, sent me this one to show you guys and review for you. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. Uh, we'll have some run footage for you of it in this video going over like my little cardboard Kyosho uh, stuff that I do for the in the studio testing. And then uh, I'll have a separate video so that it's not like one 30 minute video. I'll have a separate video that's a run video showing you guys it out on the trail and having some fun. So that one is to come. Right now we're going to open this up. Let's take a look at it. Alrighty guys, here we go. Gives you the dimensions and everything here on the box, the size of it. Uh, says it's a true ladder frame truck chassis, six by six, all wheel design, one inch bead locks, whole list of stuff here. You can pause that if you wanna take a look at all of the specs on it. And I get that information from the box. Um, and then it has a bunch of other little features. But yeah, one eighteenth scale robust crawler that they say is what it is. This is one of my favorite things about getting an FMS rig right here. They're awesome packaging that you can actually keep and uh, store your vehicles in, uh, carry them around in, makes it super handy. They can stack on a shelf this way. But here you go, guys. Everything is tucked in here so nice and tight. Got your controller right here. Comes in two pieces. We'll show you that in just a second and how all that works. The Atlas itself, it is a very cool flat blue. You get your battery charger in here as well. It is a USB charger and there's also a little bind plug inside of this bag. We're gonna tuck it back in there for safekeeping. We may want that. Where should we start? Let's put some batteries in this thing. So the way that this battery works is you just pop this open. This will come off and then you put your batteries right down in here. So I can't tell, it looks like they're double A. Oh, they might be triple. It's pretty small. Oh, it is triple. All right, so all we're gonna do is drop our batteries into here. So positive side is gonna be up on the back side of your handle. And then negative up on the other side. Oop. All right, we have power, so that's good. That's how you set this radio up. Actually a very nice radio. It's like what came with uh, like the Mini B feeling in a way um, in the design. I've had this in a couple other cars. I think it was the Mini B, but I don't remember for sure. Um, very slick how they come apart, go together, store away nice and easy, lock together. Awesome, awesome design. You do have some tools in here as well as some extra uh, shock springs and uh, directions, part lists and all that in the manual. Nothing we're gonna really look at here. And then the truck itself. Look at how good this looks. I mean, seriously, you guys. So it's got six tires, technically seven functional tires. And um, the overall look of this thing is absolutely stunning. Has working lights, front and rear. So you've got working tail lights. We'll go ahead and get the battery plugged in here. So this opens up. It's just magnetized, and then it has um, screws that are holding the body in to pivot up on the front. So it's kind of hard to see in here with these screws on. So we'll go ahead and just take them off. So all of the hardware I should point out is a Phillips, and it does come with a little tiny Phillips head screwdriver in here to work with. Um, this is what hand cramps are made of <laughs> right here. Already feeling my hand cramping up. All right, so that's it. We got the screws out. This, like I said, magnetizes. You pop that magnet that's sitting. There's a piece of metal in the back of the body here. Little magnet down inside there. Battery tray right here. We've got this um, neat type of holder for the battery, but this one actually broke. This O-ring on the front part, it looks like, uh, is broken. And then this one is actually strapping in. So these just pull over it and there's a little clip that you use to uh, lock the batteries in. 
So I will need to get probably another just little piece of rubber I can use to put over this and hold it down. Uh, or yeah, I can put Velcro on the battery and just push it in that way and have it hold in. Uh, looking inside, which is why we want to take the body off, you can see where everything's laid out. You've got your servo up front here is chassis mounted and it is a micro servo and it's easy to get to and very easy to swap in that way because it is mounted to the chassis. You could just pull out these screws and the servo horn screw on the bottom and you're good to go. This is flopping around right now because uh, I don't want to cut off all the things holding the lights together with it. So I'm just kind of trying to work with it uh, and show you guys. But what's nice about it is it is a three cable, three pin, uh, goes into this ESC, which has got kind of a traditional layout in that way. Um, you've got right here the little lead for your lights uh, and another additional attachment here where you plug in your batteries there. So it's powered on, show you the headlights working. Looks super good. Nice warm glow to them, very vintage and old. Um, this power wagon style body that it has. Tail lights in the rear. Uh, I'm gonna flip this on. And the lights are just on and I like that. We'll go ahead and turn this off. Yeah, your battery is a 600 milliamp hour 2S battery and it has the little connector here for you to be able to plug into the charger that's included. Uh, transmission is tucked in here, very standard style RC car style transmission. Uh, motors mounted right there into it. Don't know exactly what size it is. If it's similar to the SCX24 motor, it's definitely longer, I would say. Um, but I don't know, I don't know what the size of these motors. In this smaller size, it's harder for me. There's so many motor numbers as it is. I, I don't know. And um, so that'll make it upgrading. I'll have to do some research, what we can put into here and, uh, and do some upgrading for it. But yeah, again, transmission's tucked in right there. Um, ESC, got your servo, and then it's got this uh, metal chassis right in here. It's not like a C-channel style that you see in a lot of crawlers, it's a flat piece of aluminum that's anodized black. Right here you can see it real nice, shining in the light. Goes all the way down. The, um, the shock hoops are cut right out of that and drilled. So you've got this plastic piece in here but the um, chassis drops below and then comes back up uh, as like a little hoop to put your shocks into. So that works. It looks like they'd be threaded as it is. There's no um, nuts on the inside. So those are threaded to tap into there. Um, really cool about this truck is the detail that they did with all the plastic molding uh, from the whole bed here that does drop in and has room you could put a whole bunch of stuff back here looks super cool um, this does open they say it's got an opening back in here and uh comes right off <laughs> as we just found out and so you could store stuff in there spare battery looks like would fit in there if you had one P potentially i think it would um yeah so lots of options with that then the spare tire you've got that seventh tire and wheel back there, which these are bead lock wheels. That's something to point out. Um, they, they do have screws on the inside here so you can change out your tires if you want to pretty easily that way. Um, and they're one inch, so there's a lot of one inch tires out there uh, on the market right now with the SCX 24s and all that, which I should put on here so you guys a little size comparison between the two. Um, It's quite a bit, quite a bit bigger, as you can see there. There's definitely gonna be some options for tires. They might make them smaller because of it uh, being for a smaller style truck, but the rims themselves or wheels themselves are one inch, which gives you lots of options. Uh, the shocks on it are just friction dampers, springs on them, and again, there are other options for springs. I think in this scale, Usually it does all right. It's they can look a little bouncy out there. Um, I found sometimes just kind of putting grease inside um, can help it a little bit, but 
I like when I watch these cars drive, the, the articulation when you get all these axles working. Speaking of axles, looking underneath here, um, plastic axles, but they are a ring, like a bevel gear um, diff. They're locked though, that's nice. So it's not open. You'll have full power going to both wheels, uh, but it does have a differential style axle here. It's not a worm gear. Um, so you have a, a you know, ring and ping, pinion style uh, bevel gear style diff in there. Um, it does have metal pivot balls. And then I saw an RC driver actually that these aren't pivot balls where it connects. It's kind of how the body connected in the same way. It's just screws holding it here um, instead of having a pivot ball and then the screw going in and having it work on that. But I don't know if it'll cause them to back out or not, but I've seen a lot of people running these now. They, this is not a brand new vehicle and they've done well and people love them. So I'm excited to finally get it out there. Uh, tires feel good, no foams in them. You could take these off, they're bead locks, like I said, put foams in them if you want to do that. Um, change them out. These are called the Terez. Yeah, I like the look of the wheel itself a lot. Just a very military looking truck to me. Has some good style to it. Um, it is a, a matte paint finish on it with clear windows, which is nice. It's not a sticker for the windows. Um, I mean, there is a sticker for the window, but it's not, it's still clear and you can see through it. So if you want to put in an interior molded front bumpers, and then you look back here, the exhaust is super cool, tricked out here as well, making the exhaust look super scale on the bottom. Uh, and I don't actually, I don't know what they, they call these. <laughs> I'm blanking on, on the name of uh, what that is on the exhaust. I'm not, a, I'm not a car guy when it really comes down to it. Um, I've learned everything I know about cars from RCs, to be honest, so uh, I'm learning. On the front here, there is a plastic molded grill. The light buckets, it's pretty cool, guys. So let's, let's just see how it does. We're going to bring out that little uh, piece that I have running on the table here. Just get a first impression, as we can't get it out right now. One, it's really late, and two, there's a lot of snow on the ground, so I'm going to have to take it up to a local hobby shop, run it on their track. Um, so these guys... Uh, if you want to buy one of these, they're around, at the time of the making of this video, around $160. Pricing's going up and down and all over these days, um, just with everything going on in the world. But um, at the time of recording, it's about $160. Uh, you can get them at your local hobby shops. You can get them on Horizon Hobby, uh, A-Name, and that's how they're able to distribute to local hobby shops and stuff as well. So um, they're out there, and there's parts for them, which is a good thing. Uh, it is a U.S. market type item, and so that's good because we have easy availability of parts and support for them that way. So let's see it run. All right, we're going to run it without screwing it back together because it seems like it's going to do it all right. Servo seems all right. Oh, you do have some low-end control. Yeah, no problem with that. It's got some noise to it. That motor is really, really churning. It's got some grunt, we'll say that. Definitely got some flexibility. I always wondered, I don't do much with the six by six scene. Um, this is the first one. Uh, I've had a couple of um, really toy grade ones that were six by six. And I would put this more in a hobby grade micro crawler, mini crawler type um, area. It, it forced that line. Ooh, is it going to hold on? Oh, there's enough weight in the back end to keep it from going over right off the table. That's cool. All right, I'm going to switch this around. We'll try and give you guys some of the, uh, the articulation looks that it gives right there look at that makes that corner off of that all right come up it this way see if we can get it to push 
Oh, uh, we're high centering. Oh, we're really crooked, but it's holding on. All right, dropped it down. It handles really good for box stock from capabilities that we've seen with some of the other trucks that we've had here. I, I'd say it handles really good uh, for ready to run micro. Even compared to some of its brothers. Um, we had the, uh, the Toyota Land Cruiser one and the six wheels of this gives it just a little bit more stability than that had and that's a really fun cool truck as well oh, look at that i just love how the multiple parts of articulation and suspension work on this it looks so cool lights look amazing too they got that warm glow up front atlas six by six you surprised me In the price point, because you can get into like an SCX24 for now, they're about 140 bucks. This sits about 20 to 30 bucks more. And you've got extra wheels, extra axles, a little bit bigger. So if you're actually out and doing some outdoor terrain as well, this would have more capability just because it has more clearance. Um, Drag brake wise, and I wonder too, like, let's see what drag brake is like. It comes to a pretty, pretty abrupt stop. Doesn't have a whole lot of top in there either. That's because it has that 100 turn motor in there. It's all about torque, which is giving it that nice slow crawl capability that feels smoother than a lot of the other trucks that come out that you crawl with in the micro world. Um, but if you needed wheel speed, you'd be, you'd be hurting for some, but maybe it just makes up for it in that grunt, that low end grunt that it has to so just keep pushing. I dig it a lot. Not only do I love the look of it, I love the look of it when it's going over this and it's front end's going one way and the back two axles are going opposite ways. It just looks so cool. This controller is, works really good for one-handed too. If you're doing one-handed driving, you can just sit in one hand and drive this thing all day. Wow, that's some nice grab on right there. Look at that, that's some cool flex. Very nice. Well, I approve of this one a lot. I really, really like this, you guys. This is the Atlas 6x6 by FMS, and they knocked it out of the park with this one. And this is one of the first FMS vehicles I'd seen, and I'm just now getting my hands on it, and I'm liking what I'm seeing, guys. A lot. Alrighty, guys, there you have it. The Atlas 6x6. I dig it. I think it's a great little car. For a micro, I think it looks really cool. Six by six gives it a lot more stability too for hill climbing uh, with the extra wheels and length to it. Uh, does add some potential maybe for hanging up, but because it does have the extra wheels to push through um, the actual area here where you would high center, um, you may still have connection in the rear to push past it. So, you know, it's one of those things where there's trade-offs, however you look at it. Um, I think so far this may be Box stock, out of the box. This could be my favorite one as far as running capability box stock. So far out of the micros, 118th, 20, 124 scale that I've run um, so far. And I've done the Deadbolts, C10s, Jeeps. Uh, we've done the, um, the Charisma. We had uh, the ECX Barrage one. So I've had quite a few of them. I haven't done Panda Hobby yet, but I'm really liking this one so far, guys. Anyway... That's it. We'll have it on the trail for you guys very soon here. Until then, we'll see you next time.